Oh, boy, am I excited to see you. Mm, it's going to be a wonderful morning this morning. Uh, today is the last day of the Power Voice program. And, and, and because I'm going to be doing something else. And so I'm going to talk to you about something that I had to pay attention to myself. Get back on track. <laughs> Some of you have been thinking about doing something with your voice and your story, and you just dropped it. Well, let me give you an example and my example. I, I committed myself to improving my health and releasing some weight. Notice, I didn't say lose weight, because anything you lose, you go look for. I'm releasing it. <laughs> And I got off track. Something happened. And so I forgot. <laughs> Have you ever started a diet and you got off track? Or something that you said that you were going to do and you got off track? Made some New Year's resolutions and you got off track? Something that you said you were going to take care of and you allowed yourself to be distracted? See, I think the reason they call this the attention economy, because it's so difficult to get people to pay attention to the things that they should be doing day to day, hour to hour, moment to moment, and that we unconsciously get off track. I had to ask myself, what are you about to do? Why are you about to eat this? This morning, I got off track yesterday. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that today. I'm getting on track today. And I realized that I've got to monitor myself. I realized that I have to have support, that I can't do this by myself. I need some help. Different things mess with me. <laughs> Put it on those things. This woman you gave me, Lord, that's why I did it. <laughs> and so, uh, so I, I want to share with you, those who want to make a difference in the world, you have a power voice. I've developed a system on how you can access that power voice. I teach you how to do that. And I, I, I'm going to close that out today. We, we got, I'm only looking for a few people today on this particular program. And, and the reason I'm, 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 I'm going to change the program, I don't want everybody. I, I'm, I'm looking for people who are hungry to speak. I'm going to start that tomorrow. But today I'm going to finish out Power Voice program for people who realize, hey, this can advance my career. Hey, this can help me to build my organization. Hey, this can help me to sell myself, to sell my ideas. Uh, this can have great impact on how I show up in my relationships personally and professionally. And, and what I think about is that if there's one talent that we have that goes undeveloped, to our grave in most people is the ability to communicate. That's a, that's a superpower. But most people go to their graves with an undeveloped superpower that they never use. They never invest in themselves. We've heard the expression, put your money where your mouth is. They never do that because they don't think it's important. They don't think it can do anything for you. Guess what? It can. In the beginning was the word. Words are powerful. They impact people's lives. Steve Jobs said the storyteller is the most powerful person in the world. Why would he say that if it weren't true? Because he was a great storyteller and sold some incredible products. I've, and when I think about how I started out, the journey, the journey being born in an abandoned building on a floor with my twin brother, Wesley, and we just celebrated 76. When I think about that and the journey, 
I told my brother this morning, I said, I want you to watch something. Because he never traveled with me to speak. He, he has his own life. And so I want you to watch. And I was in Hong Kong, Hong Kong, China. I'm just, I want you to watch this presentation here. And if you're ready to learn how to access your power voice so you can be more impactful, stand and speak with confidence and, and competence and be able to influence and, and be able to transform people's lives. If you're ready, you, you're going to, I want you to put voice in the comment section now. If you're ready to do that, I'm, I, Tola, I want you to play the presentation, please. To to meet incredible people, I want you to keep in mind. I want you to write this down. Somebody is waiting to hear your voice. There are people all over the world that's waiting to hear your voice. I don't know you, but here's what I know about you. That you have something special. You have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. And in this limited time that, that we have together, I want you to think about some major goals that you have in your life. A friend of mine, told me a period in his life he was going across Europe on a, a train and, and at different points people would wake him up, the staff on the train, and ask him three questions. Who are you? Why are you here? And where are you going? And I think that life is always asking us that question. Who are you? How do you see yourself? How do you define yourself? Why are you here? What is it that caused some of you to fly in from different countries to show up? What is it about this opportunity as an entrepreneur that you decided to be present? Samson talked about that that's 80% of, 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 of what it is that you do, just showing up is major in achieving your goal. And where are you going? There's some dream that you have, something that you want to do, something that you want to accomplish. And so as you, as you, I want you to think about three major goals that you'd like to achieve. When I think about Kim and in a moment in her life, she heard my voice. And, and at that moment, she decided that there was a possibility that she could create a new life for herself. Yes, some of you here right now in growing your business, that people that you spoke to, that as a result of your voice, as a result of your showing a level of kindness, and I want to talk about the spirit of the entrepreneur. Write this down. Kindness and interest. That today more than ever, People are looking for relationships. And when you not advance the business, but when you show kindness and interest in people, in their dreams, in their goals, in their life, and this time where there's no such thing as job security, the day is gone where a person can expect to go to college and graduate and expect to be employed for the rest of their lives. That day is gone. And so as a result of you showing up, showing a level of kindness and interest in them and their dream and how they can provide for themselves and their family, that means a lot today. As the saying goes, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. The other thing thing is part of the spirit of an entrepreneur is and you're doing this right now you must invest in yourself Warren Buffett was interviewed during the heart of recession in the United States and he was asked a question here's a guy that's a billionaire he's a billions of dollars in real estate billions of dollars in the stock market 
and they ask him the question, what's the most important investment you can make? And he said, without blinking an eye, in yourself. And that's what you've done by your being here. Earl Nightingale said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. It has been said, people don't live life as it is, they live life as they are. And so you've invested in yourself, in the spirit of being an entrepreneur and building your business. You're investing in yourself because the key to achieving your goals is believing in yourself. That's, that's major. I didn't do what I'm doing now for years because I didn't believe in myself. I was born in a poor section of the United States called Miami, Florida, in Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother. And when we were six weeks of age, we were adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. I often say when I speak all that I am and all that I ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. And she adopted seven children, and I was among the seven that she adopted. And when I was in school, I was labeled educable, mentally retarded, a slow learner, and put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, and I failed again when I was in the eighth grade. And I don't have any college education, but I had a dream early on. At 10 years old, I promised my mother, I said, Mama, she said, what is it, Leslie? When I become a man, I'm going to buy you a home. She used to work in these wealthy homes on Miami Beach, cleaning homes and cooking for families and keeping their children. And we wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept. We ate the food left over from the families that Mama cooked for. And I wanted, as a kid, I said, when I become a man, we will never have to eat food that's left over from someone else. When I become a man, we will never have to wear someone else's clothes. When I become a man, I'm going to provide for you. And that was a major goal of mine. That's my mother there with my twin brother, Wesley. He's five minutes older than I am. And which one am I, on the right or the left? You know, I'm the cute one, you know. <laughs> I'm on your left, all right. And so that's my mother. And so my goal and dream was to take care of her. And this is a big dream, just like you have a goal. You have a dream. There's something that you want to do. And I want you to think about your goals and dream. Your personal goal that you'd like to achieve, your professional goal, your career goal in terms of building and growing your business as an entrepreneur, how much money you want to earn. You know, people say money won't make you happy but everybody want to find out for themselves. <laughs> and so, I want you to think about, how much money do you want to earn? It was very important for me to earn a lot of money because I wanted to be there to take care of my mother. I never wanted to be rich, I, I wanted to be comfortable. Didn't want to owe anybody. And then I found out, after becoming an adult, in order to be comfortable, you gotta be rich. <laughs> that you have to have a lot of money. And at that time in my life, that was very challenging. The odds were against my being able to create that because of my background coming up in poverty. I did not see that at the time when I had this goal and dream based upon where I started. I didn't see that as a possibility. I didn't do what I'm doing now for 14 years because it seemed beyond my reality. It didn't seem like it was something that I could do. There's nobody in my environment that had ever earned a million dollars before. And there are those of you that, that have already accomplished a great deal financially and career-wise. 
And then there's some of you are asking yourself, have I made the right decision? Can I do this? I understand that. When I was building my business, I was sleeping on the floor of my office in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan on the 23rd, 21st floor. I was bathing in the sink down the hall, hiding in the closet when the janitorial staff came in to clean the offices. And I remember questioning myself as an entrepreneur, can I do this? Can I build this business? I began to doubt myself. For years, I didn't even attempt to do it because I didn't believe. As you work on yourself and work on your goals and dreams, your belief is very important, as Kim has often said, because they did a study of, of some 3,000 entrepreneurs around the world, and, and they wanted to find out what was the common denominator among them that enabled them to reach their goal. Here's what they discovered. 85% of them reached their goals because of their attitude. 15% because of their aptitude, their ability to do things. That when you work on yourself, if you just take the time to drill yourself, to retrain your thinking. My favorite book says, be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you take the time every day, and there's something I've did, and, and many of you are already doing, reading 30 to 40 pages of something positive every day to change your mental blueprint, listening to audio programs every day. I did it every day. Why? To begin to overpower the head trash in my mind, the negative thoughts, the doubts, and the fears that I had. I had to begin to get a vision of myself of beyond my mental conditioning, a vision of myself, living the dream. I want you to think about your dream right now. What motivated you and inspired you to be in this business? Investing the time and the energy. Here's another key, not only kindness and interest and showing that in people and investing in yourself, but mastering the art of communication. I spent a lot of time listening to Kim and, and I love her conviction, her spirit, her energy. When you're talking to people, the art of communication is major. It has allowed me to give lectures at Harvard University and travel around the world. And, and nobody comes here talking and communicating. All of us are born the same way, dumb, naked, and speechless. You have to learn. You have to practice. You have to work at it. And most people are not willing to do that. In the spirit of entrepreneurship, your ability to, to become successful as an entrepreneur, that you must be willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. And you've done that by your showing up. You've done that by investing in yourself. You've done that by allocating time to be here today. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, bring energy level up. And so as you look at yourself and look at your goals, one of the things I strongly believe is not where you start, it's where you're going. Where do you see yourself going? And discipline yourself every day to hold that vision. Because our thoughts have magnetic power. According to psychologists, we think 30 to 40,000 thoughts a day. How many of you ever thought about someone and they call you out of the blue? They just call you. You're getting ready to dial the phone and they're already on the phone. Has that ever happened to you before? We have these thoughts that are there. Our thoughts have magnetic power. And when you discipline your thinking, you will be amazed at what you can do when you discipline yourself to look at your goals every day, to review them, to put together your prospecting list, to look at how you're 
presenting and how you, how you show up each day as you're working toward your goals and dreams, by engaging in a ritual that you're working on to build your business as an entrepreneur. That's how I was able to get up off the floor of the Penobscot building when I was sleeping on the floor of my office. That's how I was able to transform my life in, in three years and earn my first million in three years. But before then, 14 years before then, I didn't even think this life that I'm now living was available to me. But as a result of doing what you're doing, coming to events, as a result of doing what you're doing, listening to motivational lectures, as a result of doing what you're doing, seeing people on stage, receiving recognition, I begin to see myself living a different dream, living a different life. And I kept saying and affirming to myself, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. The other thing is that as you think about your goals and dreams, you gotta have heart. It has a, it's a, the, the spirit of an entrepreneur, hard driven life. It's, this is a hard business. It's H E A R T and H A R D. It takes a lot of heart. I didn't do what I'm doing right now because I knew it would be hard to reinvent myself. It would be hard for me to compete with people with college education and PhDs and MBAs and see myself as an intellectual resource. That would be hard for me to begin to die to who I was to give birth to who I could become. I want you to write this down. This is very important and put it someplace where you can see it. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. Give yourself an excuse. Give yourself a pass. Come up with reasons on why you can't do it. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. And building a business is hard business. H-E-A-R-D, H-E-A-R-T, and H-A-R-D. And it takes time, it takes patience, it takes effort. The people that are successful, as Kim has said over and over again, are the people who put in the time and put in the effort. You gotta be willing to put in the effort. You gotta be willing to do the things that most people won't do. A friend of mine, she had been working for a law firm for many years, and they came to her one day and they said to her, we're going in another direction. And she was depressed for a period of time. She just could not understand as loyal as she was, all the time and energy she gave for building their practice that they would let her go. She was loyal. She did everything they asked of her, and they let her go. They said, we're going in another direction. And I said, what are you going to do now? You've been depressed. You've got to get over it. It's, it's, it's disappointing. It's painful. I said, now it's time for you to go in the direction of your dream. And that's what you've done. That's what you have signed up for in being a part of this organization. You've said to yourself, no one's going to control my destiny. You've said to yourself, I'm going to write my own check. You've said to yourself, nobody's going to tell me what time to show up, what time to get off, how long I can have a lunch break. You've said to yourself, I'm going to be in control of my own life. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, bring energy level up. And so when I think about Lucas, I, I, I spoke in Poland, and, and Lucas, he, he went through some tough times. His mother was in a fire, and she died a few days later, and he lost himself. Life happens 
comes to all of us. My favorite book says, think it not strange that you face this fiery furnaces of this world. And Luke has had to overcome that. You know, studies indicate all of us will experience at least three tragedies over the next year. Every year that happens to someone we care about or it's going to happen to us. And what Lucas had to do was he had to deal with it. He heard my voice. Someone gave him a cassette tape called Manifest Your Greatness. And it, it was something that interrupted his thinking. As an entrepreneur, one of the reasons of mastering the art of communication is very important for you is because of the fact that you're going to be able to interrupt a person's vision of themselves. That's what you do when you're presenting. It's called by psychologists their self-explanatory style, how they see themselves. And when you speak, that's why I said there's certain people that's waiting to hear your voice. When you speak, you're going to interrupt the conversation in their head that says, I can't make it. When you speak, that you're going to give them courage and you're going to begin to ignite and turn something on in them. When you speak as a result of them being in your presence, they'll become, as Mother Teresa would say, a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in their lives as a result of hearing your voice. Give yourselves a round of applause for showing up and giving people hope. And so as you think about your life and think about your goals, let us say together, it's possible. I can live my dream. I never forget a gentleman I just spoke at his funeral a few weeks ago when I first met him. I was a junior in high school. And he said, young man, go to a board and work this problem out for me. I said, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. Look at me. Yes, sir. Go to the board and work the problem out anyhow. I can't, sir. And the other students started laughing, saying, he's Leslie. He's got a twin brother, Wesley. His brother's smart, but he's DT. He said, what's DT? He's the dumb twin. <laughs> and many of the students laughed, as some of you just did. And I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk. He looked at me. He said, don't you? I, that, was, that was me speaking in Hong Kong. They had, it had, some people had headphones on with a translator and other people who understood English. But the reason I want to share that with you this is the last day, but listen to me closely. You have another voice. The voice that I used when I was in broadcasting, Les Brown, that was another voice. The voice that I had at Douglas Elementary School, that was another voice. They called me Mr. Vocabulary. Why do they call you Mr. Vocabulary? Because linguistically or orationally, I'm emphatic that I possess an ad infinitum etymology, which is simply inconquerable. Can't believe I still remember that. I was in the sixth grade. You know, I was just memorizing words out of the dictionary. That was my superpower. But I did not know that that which I enjoyed doing the gift of gab, speaking, helping people, making people laugh, entertaining people, that that would become my superpower. And, and then after that, I went on to Booker T. Washington High School and met the speech and drama instructor, Mr. Leroy Washington. And then I saw this powerful speaker named Dr. Anthony Sweeting, a childhood friend, who's the greatest speaker that I've ever seen. And then after that, things took off in so many ways. And so if, if you look at today, uh, <laughs> uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes got a new book coming out. Now, let me share something with you. If you want to be successful in life, watch successful people and do what they do. 
Bishop T.D. Jakes. <laughs> he has a new book. And I love the title of it. And and let me see. Can you can you bring that up for me, Tola? I love the title of this book because it is so clever and it's so no, excuse me, it is so T D Jakes. It's so clever. And there it is, there it is. T D Jakes, don't drop the mic. The power of your words can change the world. Come on, somebody. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't drop the mic. Everybody be talking about drop the mic. You know, T.D. Jakes is a guy who believes do not go where the path may lead. Go where there's no path and leave a trail. And so now he's come over into my space. Why? The churches are empty. <laughs> They've got to learn how to communicate beyond religion. They've got to learn how to communicate and impact people in different arenas and different venues and different ways. They've got to be able to teach people a variety of other things outside of scripture in order for them to sustain themselves. It's a different place. And, and your ability, the ability to communicate, it has everything to do with your ability to access your power voice. And so when you look at Jess, I was in Hong Kong speaking there. And so, okay, you can take that down now. And so when you look at, and, and there's, there's, there's the old say, where's the beef? You know? <laughs> Results don't lie. Results don't lie. When I look at my life, hmm. And, and we're investing in myself and discovering and being trained on how to use my voice. It, it, it makes your life recession proof. I mean, just think, I've been on this trail for a long time. I just celebrated my 76th birthday, February the 17th. And I still love it. I don't look worn out and tired. Why? Because I'm living my making. It's the calling on my life. Your calling is, is something you're made for. A job is something you get paid for. And so all of us right now can use a voice of hope and inspiration and encouragement. All of us right now, there are people right now trembling, don't know what to do, and they got something so, so present. And it's in it's in plain sight, and they can't see it. And it's their voice. <laughs> I was one of them for fourteen years. I just couldn't see it for seeing it. If you understand what I'm talking about, <laughs> can you can you feel a brother up in here, up in here? So let me go through a slide presentation. Let me show you the trajectory of my life, investing in myself because your voice can give you access to different things. Tola, bring the slide presentation up, please. Because most people, they take their voice, their knowledge, their experiences to the cemetery, to the cemetery. And why? They, they don't, Right there, just leave it just like it is. I'll talk behind it. That's my mother. I mean, and just, I'm going to show you how powerful your voice is, how powerful it is. That's, that's, that's Mrs. Mamie Brown that you always hear me say when I end up closing out on my speech. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. It's been a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. I tell the story about Mama taking Wesley and I, my twin brother, as foster kids. And then she took in five more. And, and, and then we were raised in poverty. Poverty, do you hear me? That's two pieces of sugar cane. I'm on the right, Wesley's on the left. It's five minutes between us. And no one, trust me on this, when, when we are told 
in my favorite book, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. I want to put something else with that. When you live the calling on your life, eye has not seen ear has not heard. When you stop living a, a life that's not you and do that which is in your heart, where your heart is there, your treasure is also. When you bet on you, when you do something not just to make money, but do something because it's you, you'll make some money, more than you can ever begin to imagine. So just watch. Listen, and I'm telling you what happens when you get a trained voice. So I got into radio. Mr. Washington said, Mr. Brown, develop your communication skills. Because once you open your mouth, young man, you tell the world who you are. And during the time I got in radio, there was Milton Butterball Smith and Fred Hanna. <laughs> And, uh, and so many others, you know, oh my goodness. When I think Rock and Roger, <laughs> Nick with the solid kick. I, I came up during the time. Wow, 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 man, Steve. They had all these different disc jockeys. And there I was among them. That was something that I wanted to do. That's a way in which I wanted to use my voice. And, and, and then, then I, I became a community activist in Columbus, Ohio. I did radio, but I don't want to just entertain people. I want to use radio as a platform to educate people about the things that were impacting us. And part of that we're dealing with to this day. What got me fired? I, I protest against police brutality, and my protest was so compelling, over 5,000 people joined me in the heart of winter. You don't hear about demonstrations in the winter, and many of the policemen joined me. African-American policemen, join me in that demonstration. I didn't know I had that in me. I didn't have any clue. And then I ran for the Ohio legislature. Passed 14 bills my first term. That's Mike Stinziano on my right. I had no idea that I had the ability to do that. Became the chairman of the Human Resource Committee and the Education Committee. Listen, you, your voice can make a difference. You get the proper training, your voice can make a difference. If you put the effort and the time in you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. And what drove you less? How, how, how did you overcome the odds? My mother, that's what drove me. That's what drove me. You think I didn't face some odds? You think doors weren't closed in my face? You think people didn't tell me no? Nobody, when I got on the stage, I was the only raisin in the glass of milk. But what drove you? What drove me? Mamie Brown. I feel like Abraham Lincoln who said, all that I am and all that I ever hoped to be, I owe to my mother. I'm here because of two women. One gave me life. The other one, that one right there, she gave me love. Mm, yeah. That's what drove me. I said, Mama, I turn 18. You'll never pay another bill. I don't believe that women are supposed to pay bills. That should be in the Bible somewhere. A man, not a grown boy, pay the bills, work, and take responsibility and protect the family. No, no. I said, Mama, you're not paying any more bills. I turned 18. I set her down, took care of her, bought her home. And she made her transition to be with the Lord at 89. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then in Miami, I had come back to Miami. I left a young, young, what I would call myself, a, 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 a guy who had this drive and passion to become involved in radio. And I was, I was 20 years old. But I came back a different person. That's me there. The community activists came alive in me again. I was at City Hall in Miami fighting for the job of Black City manager Howard Gary. And people, when I said, come out, 
They say a, a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown. Oh, I was in Miami. That's my hometown. And when I spoke because I'd been trained, when I spoke and said, we're not going to let this go down, they're not going to fire him without a fight. And when we packed City Hall in Miami, they'd never had a demonstration like that before. And we kept Howard Gary's job. Then I went on and left Miami <laughs> to do other things. Old Corbett Les Brown holding two pieces of, of, of sugar cane with his brother. And I've lectured at Harvard, even with my son, John Leslie. Received the highest award from the National Speakers Association. I'm going to teach you how to speak to the world. When you discover your power voice, you get recognition on how to tell your story and how to strengthen your brand. I'm going to tell you what I know. There's no theory I will share with you from my experience. And because of, of, of my training, and how to access it, how to have the versatility and flexibility to speak to any type of audience. That brought recognition to me. When you know how to tell your story, it will bring recognition to you. We know about Barack Obama, the audacity of hope. We know about T.D. Jakes, woman thou art loose. We know about Malcolm X, by any means necessary. We know about Dr. King, I have a dream. Yeah. Oh, boy, when you know how to tell the story, come on now. And who would have thought? When you access your power voice, I didn't have the money these guys have. They have the complexion of connection. I have the complexion of rejection. I remember at Gunther Ringer, they spent millions of dollars promoting Tony Robbins, who's, who's just a really talented speaker. And I asked them after I send them my video, would y'all promote me too? They said, no, because you're black. And we don't believe America is ready for a black motivational speaker. I wrote them back. Thank you for reminding me that I'm black. I never would have known that if you hadn't told me. <laughs> oh, behave. However... As my mother would say, anywho, <laughs> when they selected the top five speakers in the world, General Norman Schwarzkopf, that's good company. Leah Coker, that's good company. Robert Shuler had a weekly television program called Possibility Thinker. That's good company. And Paul Harvey, and that little raisin there. <laughs> Oh, boy, that's me there, selected among the top five speakers in the world. Who would have thought you have no idea what's in you? Then I got paid $5 million to a talk show. This is public television special that I did. Who would have thought? It's a talk show that I did. I was bad then. I've got to go back to that weight. I was lifting weights, and I wasn't. I didn't have cancer. And, and wasn't shot up with steroids every three months. But you know what? I'm still here. Yes, I turned 76 on February the 17th. I'm overweight. My sister called me a fat slob, but I'm still here. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm, I'm going to get back to that size there. Oh, I, was, mm, I had it going on. I'm going to get my sexy back on you. <laughs> that was the Les Brown show. Who would have thought? That's Brown from Overtown in Miami, Florida, in Liberty City. Come on, somebody. I mean, the, the section for put voice in the comment section, that should be running over. You should be, look, look here. Look, look, when you access your power voice. You know that guy there? Richard Branson. You, you, you can tell a lot by people, by the company they keep and who they run with. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Look here. Look at Leon Coker. Come on. Let me tell you something of it here. Robert, you know, Robert Schuler, uh, he was awesome, but T. Harv Eckert, and this is Robert Kiyosaki. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We were in Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm. This young man was in gangs, and he heard my voice. Ashwin Williams. 
He heard my voice. He was one of the young men that was a great athlete in South Africa. After he heard my voice, he got out of the gangs and became a force for good and working with Nelson Mandela, Ashwin Williams. When I went over there, we met. Boy, he's, he was quite a young man. Yeah. Al McDougall, just talk to him. Boy, Al, I wrote the forward for his book. When, you, when, you, when I train you, I, I, I do what, whatever is necessary to take your life, your book, your career to the next level. No other speaker did that for me. Why? They thought competition. Oh, there's enough for everybody. I could have gotten here faster, but you know what? It's okay. To God be the glory. I'm here. All things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. I'm here. Put voice in the comment section. I'm here. Come on, somebody. Wait a minute. Let's go back here. This is, wait, wait, hold it. Let me, let me see. Now, let me. Let me go here. Yeah, that's me in Hong Kong <laughs> with Kim Wee. She heard my voice and it changed their life. And she had me speaking to thousands of people. This is oh Soraya, Soraya Dean. She she's a Muslim and she brings together Christians and Muslims to open up communication. This is Kenny Chapman. His father was a motorcyclist. Taught him how to smoke marijuana when he was 11. He was killed in their backyard. He came to my training. Now I speak to businesses all around the world. Johnny Wembry out of Dallas, Texas. From the hood to doing good. Oh, boy. This, this, this young man here. This, he's special. There's no question about it. Johnny is special up in here. Powerful speaker and trainer and entrepreneur. Yes, he is. Annie Crawley, she went to a convention. I spoke. She is among 5,000 people, and she sold everything she had except her car and drove from Chicago to California to become involved in underwater videography. She sent me a text. Les, I want to teach you how to do underwater videography. We are videotaping hammerhead sharks. I text her back. Have you ever heard of a black person being eaten by a shark? She texts back. She said, come to think of it, no. I said, because we don't do things like that. <laughs> Send me the video. I'll be just fine. <laughs> okay, this is Kim Wee and I. We... Oh boy, we were together. It's just, 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 she's just an incredible person, great friend. Oh boy, Gloria Ramirez in, in, and she's from Columbia in Fort Lauderdale, MBA, and she's a powerful speaker. Trish Luna de Alva, I wrote the forward for her book, Take Back Your Power. She's awesome. Sean B. Arnold, she went to school with Kamala. Harris, the vice president of these United States. They were classmates together in college. And she is now my attorney. She's awesome and a powerful speaker. Wow. Incredible story. We're going to interview her tomorrow. Al McDougall. Mm. Al was homeless and used to sleep out side of five-star hotels. <laughs> and then he heard my voice and changed his life. And now he's changing other people's lives. That's it. That's it. Okay. So, so what, 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 what are you saying, Les? I'm saying that you can change your life. You can change your life. You can change your life. Hold a minute now. This is Lauren calling me. Hey, Lauren, what's going on? I'm doing a, a slide presentation. I'm online. Okay. Okay. Call me right back. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yes. So, so, Tola, bring me back up, please. So, as you look at yourself, 
it's time to allow your voice to serve you. This is, life is, Helen Keller said this. Now, here's a woman who was born deaf and blind. She said, she said, life is either a daring adventure or it's boring. Tola, bring me up, please. I'm through with the slides. Life is either a daring adventure, it's boring, or it's boring. Make your life a daring adventure. Tola, thank you so much. Yeah. Make your life a daring adventure. Don't, li don't live a boring life. No. Take a chance on you. Let you put your money where your mouth is. And decide to live a life that will outlive you. Travel the world. See, see the world. Not, you don't, you know, only 15% of people travel the world. Most people have never been out of the country. No. Don't limit yourself. You got greatness in you. Get around the right people, people that will lift you up, people that you can learn things from, people that will inspire you to grow and to reach, and to challenge yourself. Herein my Father glorify that ye bear much fruit, not little bit of fruit, but much fruit. And sometimes you got to get an attitude with yourself. I, I looked at myself one day and said, you know what? I know I can do better than this. I know it and I'm going to do it. And I use my voice. <laughs> and here I am at 76. 76 is the best investment I made when I invested in my voice, when I put my money where my mouth was. When I bet it on me, when I stepped out of line of a J-O-B, the journey of the broke, when I faced the reality that the 40-40 plan was gone, where you go to college, leave with a lot of debt, and expect to work on a job for 40 years, and expect to retire on 40%, which wasn't enough in the first place. Don't be intimidated by Corona. You're made in the likeness and image of God. You've been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. But most of us take that authority to the cemetery. We surrender to the distractions. Don't have a clue. I didn't have a clue who I was. 14 years sitting on the side. 14 years getting fired from job after job after job because it wasn't me in life when you don't have enough courage and insight to know that you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, when you don't have enough courage and insight to know to bet on you and it's time to move on, life will move on you and fire your behind. I mean, I, I've been fired so much I don't even know remember. I don't even remember and I don't care. I see them as angels so I can be in my rightful place. So I can do what I'm supposed to do. I came here to speak. What did you come here for? Most people don't take the time to reflect on that question. I, that's why Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life, the day that you're born and the day you realize why you were born. Mm. You come around, give me 90 days. No, I don't need 90, 40 days. Give me 40 days. You will be changed. You'll get access to your power voice. You will be changed. You'll be able to control your own destiny. Put voice in the comment section. Today is the last day because I'm now, I'm ready to go to the next level. I'm looking for people that are hungry. Mm, your masses. No, that's why Jesus said, he who has ear, let him hear. Work with the willing, whosoever will, let him come.
<laughs> oh boy. I, I realized something too in promoting this, put voice in the comment section. When I look at the audiences that many of these comedians and entertainers are able to build up and a minuscule number of people who are willing to invest in themselves. When I look at the number, the millions of people who spend hours looking at pornography and old fights and football games and basketball games and getting into arguments, no. LeBron is better than Michael. Look at his stats. No, Michael is better than LeBron. Oh, look, um, this rapper got a beef over here with this rapper. Oh, and this one here got a beef over here with this beef. Yeah. Oh, boy. Lest our feet stray to the place, our God, where we met thee lest our, God, our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. I see these young guys in Atlanta where Dr. King was born, going around with their pants below their butt, showing their behinds. Oh. I get upset with myself. I haven't done enough to reach the ones that can hear me because all our kids are not crazy. Some of them are aliens and some are temporarily insane. All of them are teachable, reachable and redeemable. But many don't want to hear right now. They don't want to hear. Person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. I ask my youngest son, the one over me with the red glasses, how you feel now since you've been back with me? How do you feel? He started laughing. He started laughing. We both laugh. And I got teary. Because I knew he was there because of God's grace and mercy. God's hand was on his life. I prayed so hard. I said, if you saved my son, my oldest one who was at death's door, he's the one on the left, Calvin. Went from 265 pounds down to around 60 pounds. My youngest, John Leslie. I said, I'm praying for my sons. Give them all my blessings. I'm not praying for me. I'm not asking you to remove cancer from me. I got this. Just save my boys. Don't take my sons. Don't take my sons. I've got work to do. You know that. Forgive me for the time that I wasted. Forgive me for the time that I was temporarily insane. Look at me. You know I'm different. Look at my heart. Ain't what I want to be. Ain't what I'm going to be. But thank God for showing what I was. Save my boys. You think Paul worked for you? I'll make you proud. I'm going to train the best speakers on the planet. I'm going to make a great impact. I'm going to change lives around the world. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make you proud. <laughs> I'm here because of God's grace and mercy. If you like to make him proud, in the beginning was the word. 
put voice in the comment section. Still the last chance. I'm closing this out. I got the greater work to do, bigger things, bigger fish to fry. I'm about to do some real big stuff up in here. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. It's been a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. God bless you. God bless your story. God bless your voice. God bless your dreams. Bye for now. Tyrone, I'm about to land the plane. Tyrone want me to land this plane. <laughs> Oh, boy, this has been wonderful. <laughs> oh, behave, whatever. <laughs>